Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Romero. Uh, I will be your professor for the CSS 106 Succeeding in College course here at Eastern Gateway Community College. I wanted to do a quick introductory video just to explain a few things to everyone so that you can start your term off on the right foot um, and to express how excited I am to be able to work with you all this semester. I've been getting a few emails already, so I wanted to clarify a few things and also elaborate on a few things so that you can ensure that you're successful um, throughout the semester. So first, I wanted to explain a little bit about what this course is. So CSS 106 is called Succeeding in College, and it's intended to provide you with the information about support systems and student and academic affairs services that are, offer that are offered at the college. Um, on top of it being intended to help you understand the various intricacies of being a college student. Uh, this course is also intended to help you with time management, things like understanding how to navigate online learning. It also pushes you to begin planning for your future, um, and it's a course that helps you become a critical thinker and a critical analyzer um, as you move forward through your college career. One of the things that I wanted to make sure that I elaborated on was how serious this class is and how I want to make sure that everybody who's taken CSS 106 understands that this course is to be taken as seriously as any other class. So in an earlier email that I sent to you all this weekend, I shared that this class is not to be thought of as a bird course. So in other words, a class that you can simply fly through. And yes, I did take that from uh, the Sister Act 2 movie, for those who have seen it. Um, so it's important that you ensure that you're reading everything, that you're watching all of the assigned videos, that you're completing tasks on time, and that your assignments are of high collegiate quality. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about what an eight-week class is. So you all are enrolled in an eight-week course, which is unlike a traditional 16-week course. What that means is that in eight weeks, you're going to be completing 16 weeks worth of course material. So you're going to be doing double course load every week. And so with that said, it's going to be very important for you all to prioritize your time to make sure that you're staying on top of your tasks because it is going to be a lot of work in one week. So again, I'm going to reiterate that 16 weeks worth of work condensed into eight weeks, so that is double the reading, double the assignments in a week's period. I'm very confident that you all are going to be able to accomplish it, um, especially in this particular course. So I wanted to elaborate and, and just make sure that you all understood that an eight-week course is not less work than a 16-week course. It's actually all of those 16 weeks worth of work condensed into eight weeks. So essentially, in week one of an eight-week class, you're doing the assignments that you would do in weeks one and week two um, in a 16-week class. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective. So when you are going through the online class, I realize that this is either the first college course ever um, or the first online course ever for many students, not all, but for many students taking CSS 106. And I've already been receiving a lot of emails about how to navigate LoudCloud. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I want to give is that when you enter the online classroom in LoudClouds, LoudCloud, you're going to notice that there are a bunch of tabs on the left-hand side, and the first major tab says Getting Started. Start there, read absolutely everything, work your way down, and along the way, download the course syllabus, the course calendar, the sample discussion board responses, which demonstrate what college level discussion board posts should look like, and which we'll talk about um, in just a second, and then work your way through the week one, unit one folders. Each Sunday, a new week's worth of work is going to open up for you, so it should be fairly easy for you to follow along as the semester continues. I'll not necessarily make a video each week explaining the assignments for that particular week, so my biggest piece of advice is to make sure that you're reading every bit of content very carefully. Um, if there's a video embedded, watch it. If there's a quiz, 
take it by the due date. Um, okay, so as you're going through the getting started tab, the major tab, you're going to come across the course syllabus. The week one unit one folder is going to talk a lot more about what a syllabus is, but I wanted to just give you um, a heads up of what to expect. So the course syllabus is going to provide you with all of the information that you need to know about this class. This is going to help you understand everything that's expected of you. It's going to also help you navigate your way through class expectations throughout the term. When you have general course questions, please, 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 please refer back to the syllabus to see if your question can be answered there first before reaching out to me via email. Again, I know this is the first class or the first online class for many of you, and it can be anxiety inducing, but please refer to the syllabus before sending me an email with questions because oftentimes when a question comes to me that I know can be answered using the syllabus, I'll simply respond, please refer back to the syllabus, um, which will give you the answer. So that is your guide. That is your, um, your academic Bible, per se, for the semester, so please refer back to it as often as possible. Um, under the Getting Started tab, you're also going to come across the course calendar. This course calendar provides you with the week-to-week -week sequence of the class. So this has due dates for major assignments, and it will help you calendar and prioritize your time in class. So online classes in particular require a lot of self-control, determination, and the ability not to procrastinate. And so, look, we all procrastinate from time to time, including instructors, so I, I understand, I feel you, but please, please, please be sure to keep track of what needs to be completed and when so that you don't fall behind. So that leads me to the next thing. So this course is discussion heavy. Each week you're going to be provided with discussion questions that will need to be answered. In addition to answering each discussion question, you will need to respond to two students' answers to, the, to their questions. So your responses to both the questions and what your peers say have to be meaty, they have to be hefty, and they have to be well thought out, oftentimes, if not at all times, backed up with evidence from course text, videos, or any other course materials from that week. So this is a college course, and the quality of your content has to be on point. So that means that you need to ensure that your grammar, your mechanics, your spelling are all proper so that you don't lose points, because points will be taken away for things like that. It's time to really look at the small things and fine-tune them before you post. Your initial responses to questions are going to be due on Fridays of each week, and your two peer responses will be due on Sundays of each week by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please note that there are word count requirements for discussion board posts. If you go into the syllabus and you read the discussion board post section, it says your own responses to questions, and even that of week one introductions, cannot be fewer than 150 words and your peer responses cannot be any fewer than 100 words per response. So if you already completed the discussion board post assignment for this week, you might want to go back and ensure that you met the proper word count requirements, which if you read the syllabus you should have. But go back and check just in case. Um, one thing I wanted to mention uh, has to do with due dates. So due dates are due dates for a reason. If you calendar your time properly, you should not have any problems whatsoever. But with that said, when it comes to quizzes each week, I will not, and I'm going to repeat myself, I will not restart a quiz for someone who has surpassed the due date. This is one of the few things that I'm not lenient on, and simply because with over 260 students that I'm teaching this semester, it becomes an extreme hassle trying to keep up with uh, restarting quizzes for individual students. So. However, if you do find yourself stuck with a discussion board task or another major assignment or if life happens, please do reach out to me so that we can figure something out. Uh, so long as there isn't a pattern of poor work or missing deadlines and things of that nature, I'm fairly easy to work with. So this is a bit of introductory material that I wanted to get out of the way that I always think is important to put into a video. If you're anything like me, I like that face-to-face -face interaction, even if it is through a video. 
So I hope that this is a little bit helpful. Um, please know that my ultimate goal is for you to be successful this semester and beyond. This course is supposed to be a foundational course for ensuring that you understand the intricacies of being a college student and are successful at being a college student. Um, and so don't hesitate to reach out to me via email if you have any questions or concerns. Um, I'm very, very excited to work with you this semester. If there's anything that I can do to help you, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, I am here for your success, and I'm very excited to, to get the ball rolling. Have a great first week here at Eastern Gateway, and welcome to CSS 106 with me, Dr. Romero, your professor. Um, and I will catch up with you all soon. Take care.